will be the chair in this session. In this case, we have six uh, presentation. Everyone has uh, 15 minutes for the presentation and five minutes uh, for questions. And uh, the first presentation uh, is uh, given by Luis Antonio Pantoja, and he will present the, the work title Stability Warranted Actor Critic Learning for Robots in Continuous Time. Uh, please, uh, Dr. Luis Antonio, you have 15 minutes for the presentation. You have the word, you have the floor. Sorry, I don't know if the first speaker is uh, attending this conference. Luis, Luis Antonio Pantoja. It seems it seems that he's not connected, Antonio. He's not connected. Okay. I don't know if he, if another speaker of this uh, of this work is present that can. That maybe can present this work, maybe Dr. Vicente Parra or Dr. Rodolfo Garcia. Are you with, with us or not? No. No. <laughs> Console designs to enforce safe implementation of physical systems, social robots. Then it is not surprising 
the statement arises like the issue of product stability on the informal learning method is still not fully addressed. Also, the lack of stability warranties strongly limits the use of reinforcement learning in safety critical robotic applications. In general, stability is a missing critical characteristic in reinforcement learning that aims to learn a trajectory by doing admissible action policy. Then it is important to study the control design and also stability. <laughs> that, that is important to guarantee reliability and safety operation of any control system. Fortunately, from optimal control theory emerged the actor fixing scheme that have paved the way to introduce stability in in reform and learning. Then also the actor critic has been used to attack optimal control problems. There, there are six uh, exciting venues that do not aim to optimize the condition, but to provide a reinforcement signal to improve the system performance. Recently, there have been used actor critics scheme for optimal control using the regressor or regressor fit. However, there still remains the problem of persistent excitation condition that is needed to guarantee the stability. Then the price to pay in optimal control is that basically the structure of the controller or the input is given. While in actor critic not optimal, we can design this controller. In this sense, in this work, we propose an adaptive neural network for actor critic for our work policy independent of the input without persistent excitation or retaining. And we focus on a model free adaptive reform and learning structure. We, uh, pro, pro, to provide robust stability analysis for a robot subject to disturbances. Here in equation one, we have the dynamic models of any real links robot manipulator, where we have the inertia metrics, the Coriolis metrics, the gravity vector, and also the generalized coordinates, velocity, and acceleration represented by Q. Also, tau stands for the torque input vector, and tau d. It stands for a disturbance external torque. Now we can re rewrite the equation one as equation two using the linear parameterization or the regressor, where S, the variable S, represents the extended velocity error. That if we design the, uh, the nominal reference as, as Q sub R, we obtain that S is a, com a linear combination of the velocity and the position errors. The control at this point is to define or design the tau subject to unknown disturbance and unknown dynamics. However, since actor critics schemes also evaluate simultaneously the performance of the, of the system, the problem is how to design a tracking controller based online performance evaluation. Here I have the problem statement that is how to design an actor critic for dynamic tool that guarantees tracking subject to evaluation of the system performance without any knowledge of the store of robot dynamics. Now, in this figure, we can see the general actor critic scheme where the critic neural network approximates a value function via the temporal difference error. And the, the, this neural network, the critic, provides a reinforced signal to the actor neural network, as we can see in the, in the figure. And finally, the actor contributes to compensate the nonlinear dynamics, the unknown nonlinear dynamics of the system. Overall, we present an asymptotic stability warranty actor critic for Lagrangian robots. Now we have the value function that can be defined as equation three. And here we can note that we have a, a work and also a discount factor. Then equation three can be written as equation four. And if we take the time derivative of equation four, we obtain equation five. And this is the continuous time temporal difference error. Since the value function R is unknown, but also is smooth, we can use the critical neural network to approximate 
this value function as equation six, where we have the we have we have the adaptive weights and the bounded nonlinear activation function. Also, we have the inputs and some fixed weights that connect the input to the hidden layer of this neural network. We can re rewrite the temporal difference error with equation six as equation seven. And notice that this temporal difference error is a consistency equation, and the goal is, is to obtain the convergence of gamma. And to guarantee this goal, we have the following proposition, that if we define the adaptation of the critical networks as equation eight, we finally uh, we are, we are going to obtain the convergence of the integral temporal difference error and the temporal difference error presented in the equation seven. And here we have the proof. If we consider this lacuna function that depends on the integral temporal difference error and the weights of the neural network, and taking its time derivative, we obtain this equation. And finally, using the adaptive law and also the the temporal difference error approximation, we obtain equation nine, which as far as eta one and eta two are positive definite, we can guarantee an attractive invariant set. Now we have the actor neural network. We, we say that the goal of the actor is to compensate the nonlinear dynamics. So the linear parameterization or the regressor can be expressed as equation 10. And then we approximate this regressor with a neural network that has a similar structure of the critical neural network. We have the adaptive weights and the nonlinear sigmoid activation function. And also we have this adaptation map for the actor's uh, weights. And here it is important to notice how the critics reinforce the adaptation of the actor neural network weights. That is a important characteristic of this scheme through the approximation of the integral temporal difference and the reward. Now we can define the controller as equation 13, where here we can see the actor neural network and here the extended velocity error coordinates that I introduced in the first section. We have a, a gain that has to be positive, positive definite. And if, if we use equation, this equation into the dynamics in S coordinates and also the adaptive weights, we obtain all these closed loop error equations. And now we are in condition to yield the main results that is a stability defined in these origins. Here we, you can note that we have the standard error velocity, the weights of the actor and the critic, and also the integral temporal difference error. Here is the result, the theorem that is that consider the closed loop equation 40 on their all the adaptive loss. Then this origin that we defined the previous slides is robust with respect to disturbance and guaranteeing convergence of the tracking errors. To prove uh, this theorem, we define this candidate, uh, lacuna candidate function that depends on the system dynamics, <laughs> the, the actual weights, and here we also include the previous lacuna function that we have defined that involves also the critic weights and the integral temporal different weights. Taking the time derivative and using, using the controller also, we obtain this lacuna function where we can guarantee that as long as these conditions stand, imply the boundedness of all the closed loop systems that we define in this equilibrium. And also implies the boundedness of S and its derivative. Furthermore, the tracking error converts to a small vicinity of zero. We did some simulation. Here is the desired trajectory that are in the Cartesian coordinates in 3D. 
And also we have here the, here the parameters of the robots. And we include the disturbance stored that we define in the model as 50 Newton mirrors at seven seconds. These are the results of the simulation. In this figure, we can see the desired 3D Cartesian trajectory versus the trajectory of the NF vector. Uh, this figure is similar, but we can see the and the trajectory made by, by the end effector. Also, here we have the integral temporal difference error and the temporal difference error that converge uh, very quickly to the origin, as we stated in the first Laponov function that we presented. Also, we have the reward and the control signal that are smooth. And here we can see the effect of the disturbance, but the controller achieved to compensate the disturbance. Here we have the convergence of the tracking error, position error, and velocity errors. And we can see that the both error remains around, around zero, as we stated in the second lacuna function. And also, we can see here the effect of the disturbance with all the after uh, controller uh, achieved to compensate the disturbance. In figure six, we can see the behavior of the critic weights and One minute. also the method weights. We include a comparison with another uh, model free controller, PID. And we use these metrics. As you can see, the, the, the metrics from the proposed scheme are smaller than this. this and this has the meaning that have a better performance compared to the classical PID. Here I have my discussions. We use the continuous time temporal difference error. We lap up to provide stability condition in closed loop. And also we explore the value function to warranty stability in the learning process. And in the action control structure, the actual network compensates the nonlinear dynamics, the regress. And also there remains to study the different design of S for improved tracking, because here we only obtain boundedness of the tracking errors. Here are my conclusions. An online free reinforcement learning continuous time TD and after critic was presented. And our proposal model free after critic scheme learns from good approximation of the value function via the temporal difference error. And we, we support the stability via the not method. And also, there, there remains to achieve asymptotic stability with a smooth control action. We can be achieved with integral sliding modes. And this is subject of future research. That's all for, for my part. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, we have time for, a, for one question, short question. Is there a question from the floor or from the virtual attendees? No. Uh, I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes. OK. Uh, my question is that in proposition one, you are assuming that the error of the neural network is bounded. But uh, how restrictive is this uh, is this, uh, this assumption? Because maybe I don't know this value at the beginning. The, I don't know the bound. Uh, and how restrictive is this assumption? Well, in the first proposition, we do not assume that is bounded. That is what we prove. Is that what uh, you prove? Okay, I understand yeah. it in a, in a bad way. That's, there. Correct. That's correct. Okay. okay, thank you. Another question? No? Then, and then uh, thank you, Professor Luis Pantoja, for your presentation. And we Thank move you. to the next pre the next uh, presentation, please. Now, Luis Enrique Ruiz uh, will present the work titled 
tracking uh, tracking in multi robot systems with non onolomic uh, constraint and obstacle avoidance uh, please uh, luis enrique are you here yes yes i'm here so okay. but i don't have the permissions to share my screen and turn on my camera so okay who can help us please Nobody. Who's the manager of this? Session? Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I know. Okay. Have the... You want to? Luis Enrique. Luis Enrique. Luis Enrique. Yes, uh, let me. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now we can see your presentation, Luis Enrique Ruiz. Luis. Okay. Please okay. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. So, as well, my name is Luis Enrique Ruiz. So the uh, the doctor Antonio. So tell us the the title of my of our work. So I'm gonna start. So we have this. Uh, Sorry. Ah, yes, the agenda that we are following around the presentation, along the presentation, is uh, well introduction. Uh, then I will present you non-anomic model, then problem definition, non-linear, is uh, non-linear controller, collision avoidance, uh, present some simulations, and uh, finally conclusions and future work. So, see, yeah, for motivation, why? Well. We want to control these uh, uh, multi-agent systems, multi-robot systems, to because we know recently uh, most of the tasks that we want to solve uh, we are using robots. So maybe uh, some tasks we can handle, but one just one agent. So the coordination of a multi-robot system or multi-agent systems it's facil facilitates or make easier the one task for for one purpose. So these tasks should be could be a uh, coordination or handle heavy obstacle. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, handle large objects, uh, some application of entertainment, exploration, or monitoring uh, big areas. So then, uh, sorry, I have problems with mouse. So well, so previous works, uh, those three works are most similar as of of work. So and arts kind of inspiration of our, of our research. So the first one by Martinez, Becerra and Gomez are developing a formation tracking. So they are uh, develop a strategy to follow a predefined trajectory in for, uh, keeping a formation of an obstacle avoidance with a non-alonomic model as a differential drive robot. Then uh, second word by Xiao and Yao, use the same purpose but uh, they use a web robot no so it's not a ddr robot but it has non-anonymic constraints and also the previous work they are using obstacle avoidance and um, finally in the third one we can see but well by carnat and isler we have a uh, work more specific work so they are trying to uh, follow a user, a person in a closed room, and they are trying to the well. The they are using uh, differential light robots with a mounted camera. So the the camera is fixed. The camera can move. Even the image that we that we have in the slide is a prototype that they are using. So uh, where they used, sorry. Uh, they try by an optimization algorithm trying to keep in most of time to the user in the field of view of the camera while the robots are keeping a formation. So this is very similar as we want to achieve. So then we have our research objective. So what do we want? We want to, elab to elaborate an algorithm the, this algorithm must be able to keep a formation around a subject. Uh, this the 
the this algorithm must be lead with the that the model of the robot is non-anonymic constraints. This is kind of uh, complicated sometimes with the movements of the subject are not bounded. It's uh, because well in previous works most of uh, movements of the subject or user are limited by rotation and straight lines. So here we are proposing to the subject moves freely and the robots must keep the formation around the the subject. Then uh, the robot just have the relative information of the subject. This relative information is position and velocity. So there we have the assumption that the robot estimates this information. And then finally, the robots must lead with the collision avoidance. So we integrate, integrate an algorithm to, to avoid obstacles. So the model that we are we using is a differential drive robot well known in the field. Uh, uh, or by uh, his seagulls, <laughs> DDR. So as we can see in the image, uh, is are the some parameters that we used in the model. So this model, uh, we can notice that we are, is a first order model. So we are controlling or in or input control is uh, velocity, angular velocity of the wheels, wheel left and right. Then. Uh, we know that sometimes it's complicated to control this kind of robot, so we uh, use a control point. This po control point is in the image, this red point. So what is red point is uh, in the same direction of our orientation that the robot has, we move, um, how is extending a, a, a point uh, in this direction with a distance h and we control this point. So we are controlling the this point and this led us to uh, decoupling the dynamics of X and Y coordinates. So we know that it still a zero dynamic that it's theta. This is maybe it's not, it's not stable, but it's bounded. So it says that theta, theta is completely dependent of X and Y coordinates, but we can uh, control X and Y. So the model, we have the parameters of the robot, the distance of the radius, uh, the, well, the radius of the wheels, and the two. Then we extend our model, or we're considering an extra, who is a robotic camera. This robotic camera, we are supposing that can be controlled by an angular velocity to to help to the robot to keep in, in the field of view to the, to the subject. So then, uh, the camera, the dynamics of the camera must consider the rotational dynamic of the of the robot. So here in our dynamic expression, we have that alpha. Alpha is the orientation the, of the of the camera. So then dynamics of alpha is considered angular velocity of the robot, who is omega, and omega c, who is the angular velocity of the camera. Then we have uh, the, our problem definition. So as we can see in the image, is an example. For example, the in, in this case, the subject is in, inside of the field of view of the robot, who is this yellow area. Uh, but how we, well, how we define the formation around the subject? Well, first we define a circular formation, but we are consider that we have all the relative information of the user. The robot estimates maybe with a vision algorithm, uh, and then we have these relative distance or so displacements. Uh, so in Cartesian coordinates, so uh, is the difference between the position of the robot and the user. Then having these coordinates, we can transform it to polar coordinates. It's not complicated to do this transformation, so it's it's very common. So now we have a relative distance r or magnitude radius from the user. So, and a relative angle. Now we decide to the formation that the robot keeps um, a desired distance around the subject, R, maybe, and the angular, mm, uh, the relative angle, we, we desire a displacement or difference between the agents, no? So we define with the immediate neighbor, uh, this difference, angular difference, who is called delta, this delta I, so then our objectives or or our problem statement is to make r i converts to r uppercase and delta converts to beta. 
So beta is defined by the number of agents or the robots. So we decide a, a, this, a circular formation around the subject. So we have these properties of beta. Beta is from minus p to p and the sum of all betas are equals to 2p. Yeah, 2 times p. Uh, then our propose to the nonlinear controller is for a tracking error, very common, a feedback linearization. We propose an error systems for the radius and delta, the distance between the robot, angular distance between the the robots. And then if we substitute the the and derivate the dynamics of this Ri, uh, we have these equations, these error equations. Then again, we for C for simplicity, we uh, simplify and substitute all these dynamics, x dot and y dot, and we have um, this mi matrix. This mi matrix is uh, invertible matrix to the coupling dynamics of the r and betas. So we can now having this expression of error dynamics. So then we can propose uh, error dynamics that we want, who is well known, so minus k e and then we can solve for you. So we have this control law for to achieve the formation. This is just to the formation, okay? So we know that K must be a diagonal matrix uh, with gains positive. So now uh, for the camera, we have uh, this error. Uh, error system is very, it's similar to the previous scheme. So, but then with Zeta is going to be the reference. It's very, this zeta is very similar to gamma, but the difference is that now the gamma is defined from the user to the robot. Now is the robot to the user. So we desire that the robot is always pointing to the user, no? So now it, it, the same process, we, uh, for simplicity, we don't extend this zeta dynamics, but if we solve for omega c, Omega C is the control, the velocity, or the control input for the camera. We have this. So Omega I is uh, uh, the angular velocity of the robot I. No. So and K3 is a positive gain. So remember that this. Well, um, I want to highlight that this algorithms or method is completely decentralized. So each robot is running these controllers to achieve the formation. Okay. So now for collision avoidance, we have proposing a very well known artificial potential fields. Uh, just to this can handle with mm, convex obstacles, uh, and if the configuration allows it, it don't can it doesn't generate uh, local minima. So we have just to it's well known, but we have this. Uh, I would say um, the sum of the forces in the environment. We have attractive forces, repulsive forces, and the attractive and repulsive forces are uh, defined by these equations, Fa and Fr, respectively. No? So we define a uh, distance, D0 and Ds, who is the activation of the forces or the uh, how the forces, when the forces, and how. Uh, um, change the trajectory, no? So I mean, if the robot is too far from the obstacle, it doesn't have sense that the force of the obstacles uh, change the trajectory. So it's just when it's it's closer, maybe it's necessary to change the trajectory or a little modification to, to avoid the obstacle. So here I have, a I have, uh, some simulations in the left side we have the simulation with non obstacles just the uh, the robots are trying to keep the formation and the um, trying the user to keep in the inside the field of view who is the yellow areas and in the right side we have with convex obstacles now so something to notice is that uh, since the reference or the angular reference is not fixed, it allows to the formation makes kind of modifications. The only constraint is that the difference between the angles, relative angles between the robots, as we can see here in the vision, it's to keep to, it must be kept, sorry. So this is how it's working. 
So we need a uh, more how to say uh, formal. Uh, so uh, when we say that we need to prove that our our control laws are stable, uh, but we have uh, the error graphs. So we can see the first one is the radius error. The second one is the difference angular difference between the robots error and finally the camera error. So as we can see, maybe the errors or or well is not uh, zero even when um. When they are making obstacle avoidance, it's more complicated even to achieve errors to serve. So what we can say that it's bonded, so it's uh, stable. So then I have these uh, conclusions and um, future work. So as we can see, well, in the first two points of these uh, 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 conclusions, we can say that we achieved successfully the formation okay so we are uh, keeping the formation around the subject and uh, uh, keep in view the subject okay inside the field of view even when when the subject is moving even when the robots are making an avoidance so that's cool and a collision avoidance so the as we can see in the simulations the robots are able to make avoidance with uh, uh, convex obstacles so then for future work we know that we we need to the um, formal proof so we are working and we know that we have to consider a candidate lapino function to uh, to make the, this formal part to the work that we can see in the graphs that errors are bounded but we need that that proofs no so then we know that artificial potential fields have some limitations or gaps that are local minima so we are working or trying to improve the even potential artificial potential fields or thinking about other methods to avoid the, the collisions um, just because when we are living with obstacles that are not convex or even with the configuration of the obstacles maybe are too close or something like that uh, it generates the minima so we are trying to solve that it's kind of hard <laughs> thinking of that and obviously we need a vision algorithm uh, as we and as I said in the problem statement, we are we have the assumption that the robots are estimating this relative information position and velocity. But how the robot are gonna to estimate that? Well, with the vision algorithms so that we are developing uh, to integrate it to the to the robots. So thank you. Thank you, thank you, Luis, for the presentation. Is there any question from the audience? No. Uh, Dr. Luis Enrique. Yes. How do you think that you you will integrate the vision uh, algorithms to this uh, problem? Because uh, I I mean, most of these algorithms are uh, quite time consuming. So yes. I'm not sure if they are work. They are they will work on real time. Do you have? Uh, a, I don't know. Maybe you see you have some. You have seen some. Uh, some algorithms that can run fast or or I don't know. Yes, uh, well, first of all, the, the complicated of the vision algorithms are the, the we need to do uh, the procession image, then transform into maybe a Cartesian uh, coordinates to the, the interpretation to the robots to know where is the, the person or where they are or the subject where they are looking. And so, but it exists on methods or strategies to lead with that. So it is, we can transform directly so from image to the controls. So it's kind of uh, field of research, the vision algorithms. Uh, I don't remember very well the, the, the strategies, but I know that exist. So, but first uh, we are working in the vision detection, no? so, uh, well, I know that exists. Well, we know or uh, that exists methods to lead with that um, uh, complex algorithms to make it to perform better to the robots. But I don't remember very well now. So, but we know that exists. Okay, thank you. Is there another question? No. Okay, thank you, Luis Enrique. Thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, well, the next uh, presentation, uh, next speaker is Alejandro Martinez.
Uh, he will present the work title Simplified Design Approach for Fast Consens Consensus in Double Integrator multi algen System Using Proportional Retarded Controller. Um, Hello, uh, uh, can you please allow me to share my screen? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Is ready now. Um, hello, everyone. This is Alejandro Martinez Gonzalez presenting simplified design approach for fast consensus in a double integrated multi agent system using a proportional retarded controller. By myself and Adrián Ramirez from the EPC Division of Control y Sistemas Dinámicos. So the presentation starts with a small introduction, then we uh, I give the problem formulation, the main results about consensus analysis, and finally some conclusions. So uh, let me start with the introduction. Okay, agreement in multi-agent systems. It has attracted great interest across a wide range of fields, including energy management, healthcare, visual surveillance, etc. The problem of design of consensus protocols has received ex extensive attention. While ensuring the stability in multi agent systems is important, achieving consensus, consensus as fast as possible holds equal significance. Recent research has incorporated artificial delays into distributed protocols. These delays based controllers. Protocols approximate derivative action, thus enhancing system reactivity, but without the noise sensitivity issues associated with pure derivative action. So we are here in fast consensus or multi-agent systems. So let me start with the preliminaries. Uh, how do we describe the system? Well, we consider and identical agents with dynamics given by a double integrator. So we have the, the rate of change of the position and the rate of change of the velocity given by an input control UI. So each agent has these dynamics and the topology of the underlying, or the underlying structure of the network is given by an undirected graph given by these vertices and edges. Well, um, a key ingredient is the Laplacian of the of the graph. So since we are considering um, on the vector graph, uh, we have a special kind of Laplacian. This uh, Laplacian has zero row sum, and by this we have an eigenvalue equal to zero, which is associated to the eigenvector one. So we have um, uh, with this property, we can arrange the agent values in this manner. The first one is equal to zero, and we the rest are given in an increasing way. So th this is a key ingredient in our uh, approach. So uh, we have the dynamics, the, the topology. Now we discuss the consensus protocol. On the left, we have a multiple delay version of a PR protocol, proportional retarded protocol. Uh, we can see that we have uh, for each agent, um, and we have to consider n different uh, gains, proportional gains, and different proportional uh, retarded gains, sorry, and the couplings uh, of the network. So in the in one part we have the, the position and the other part the retarded position. So we this is a nice protocol works well, but we try to reduce the complexity as in equation on the right. So in the right we have our proposed protocol, which only has two gains, the proportional gains and the retarded gains. Uh, the the 
induce delay H. So we, we reduce the approach for only three control parameters. The delay, uh, the gain KP and the gain KR. So how we deal with this situation? Well, uh, we construct the augmented space by letting the vector X be constructed using the position and velocity of each agent from the first to the end agent. So we, uh, we define the matrices A and B in this manner as in the bottom of the slide. So uh, this matrices depends on the Laplacian and the gains. And in this manner, when we construct the, the augmented space, we will uh, arrive to a block diagonal matrix. And when we compute the characteristic function, we find that this function can be decomposed in n different factors. And each factor has the, this form. So every, one, every factor has the same form and depends on the two gains and the uh, Laplacian eigenvalues lambda i and of course the, the delay h. So uh, in order to deal with this situation, we, co we consider this, these three key points. If the topology is connected, we have the eigenvalue equal to zero, which is associated with the eigenvector y1. Then we have that the factor f1 associated to lambda1 corresponds to consensus, consensus state of the system. Then, since lambda1 is simple and zero, the system reaches consensus if and only if all the remaining factors are stable. So analyzing the consensus stability of the system is equivalent to the study of the stability of n minus one factors. So now we're dealing with n minus one factors. Then how we approach uh, the problem of fast consensus? Well, we introduce the concept of gamma stability. So we define the spectral abscissa given by the Reimers root and then with gamma, we push the Reimer root, root uh, to the left of uh, minus gamma. Therefore, achieving uh, gamma stability for the n minus one factors will resolve the consensus stability problem expon exponentially fast. So, uh, we try to get consensus as fast as possible, and uh, we define the, uh, the consensus as, uh, well, the, on the right we have the representation of the a simulation where we can see the consensus. We can see that the position uh, goes to a common value and the velocity too, and we call this consensus. So we try to, to achieve this. Well, how we do this? So we use the div division method. So we have the, the space of parameters decomposed in regions where each region uh, has, is characterized by a number of unstable roots. So we focus as in the right, uh, on, as in the picture on the right, in the figure of the right, on the gray region where we don't have any unstable root. So how do we find this region? Well, we find the crossing points uh, given by H and the gain, the retarded gain. And uh, we can enclose this region by, by two curves, the lower curve CL and the upper curve CU. These curves enclose the established region for the agent uh, associated with the eigenvalue lambda i. So for each factor, we have one of these regions. Well, we have um, n, n minus one uh, regions 
So what do we do? Well, in the left, we have a figure considering six factors. And each, each, each factor has its own stable, stable region. So uh, the region that shares all these factors is uh, depicted in blue. So the blue region is a, a stable region of the system. Well, and that is not enough. We want fast consensus. So on, on the right, we increase gamma to push the roots to the left. So there is a point where the blue region collapses into a point. And this is the maximum exponential rate that we are looking for. So we have to deal with uh, all the n minus one factors and the maximum exponential lamb uh, gamma, sorry. Okay, but uh, this, there is a, one, a key ingredient. On the left uh, figure, we see that the blue regions, region sorry, depends on the last factor and the first one. As we can see, the, to the right, we have the first factor associated to lambda two. And the last one is associated to lambda n. And these factors, only these two factors determine the stability region of the system. So this observation allows us uh, to propose the dominant factors. So the first one, the second one, uh, the first factor associated to the second eigenvalue and the last one associated to lambda n are the factors that determine the stability of the whole system. So how do we find the maximal exponential decay rate, gamma? Well, we propose an algorithm uh, which is, 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 uh, is based on uh, uh, oh, sorry, I forgot the name of, of this algorithm. Uh, the, the, the important thing to mention is that we have um, a region of, uh, or a segment of gamma. We, we give a uh, upper bound for, for gamma and we divide the region. So we check if the, the maximal gamma is on the left or on the right. And for this purpose, we compute the region from the first factor and the region of the last factor, and we see if, if there is an intersection between them. So we repeat this process by dividing the, the section by two, and we are able to find the maximal gamma. So this is an intuitive uh, algorithm which is capable of finding the maximal gamma that we have here. So let me explain this with an example. So here we have um, a system of six agents given by a ring topology. Um, so with this, we can uh, compute the eigenvalues needed for the factors. So we can see here the first uh, eigenvalue is zero, which is, which is associated with the consensus, consensus, with the consensus state. And we can say the five reminder factors. As, uh, as we mentioned, the first factor and the last one determined the region of the system. So we can see here on the, on the figure of the left that the region collapsed to one point. This is the maximal gamma. So given this gamma, we're able to compute uh, the two gains, uh, well, well, the first uh, proportional gain is given, and we compute the delay and the retarded gain. So with these values, we are able to run uh, a simulation, and we can see that the position goes to a common value and the velocity too. So what we can conclude about this, uh, we propose a simplifying design approach for a, a proportional retarded protocol with a single delay in a double integrated multi-agent system. 
Our approach simplifies the consensus ability analysis by identifying, by identifying two key factors, the dominant factors that determine whether the system is able to achieve fast consensus. By focusing, focusing on these dominant factors, we gain value in science into the system behavior, enable, enabling the design of the PR parameters that are applicable to networks of any size, so we only use two factors. Additionally, we develop, we develop a numerical algorithm to determine the maximum exponential decay rate gamma. Thank you for your attention. Thank you to you, Alexander. Alexander. Uh, is there any question? Okay, go ahead, Pablo. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, yes. we hear you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, I have two simple questions. Mm -hmm. The first one, it's about the condition of, of, of the topology. I understand that the topology must be, or the graph must, must be undirected and connected, right? Yes. But what about the weights? Can can be weighted? Yeah. Yeah, uh, we assume that the weights are, are one. So that's why we, we call it a simplified version. Yeah, but have you tried using other weights? Yeah, I, I understand that you, you are simplifying, but is there any difference if we modify the weights? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to consider these factors in this in that case. Okay. okay. And the second question, uh, very fast. Uh, in, in modern uh, multi-agent systems literature, you, you may find different approaches to, to convergence. Have you tried uh, uh, finite time convergence or fixed time convergence? No, uh, actually uh, we're working uh, um, on the journal version of this paper, but we are focusing, focusing in, in the tuning. And uh, well, here we only find the uh, the gamma max, but we also have to give the tuning, and and uh, for the moment that's our approach. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Hector Becerra. Another question. Okay, hello. Thank you for the presentation, Alejandro. Uh, my question is related to the to the delay, to the use of the retarded controller. Yeah. What is the advantage of use that kind of controller? Uh, because it is usual to consider the delay as a constant. Yes. And then uh, given properties of the network, you have some delay in the communication and then you model your controller considering that uh, delay. And, but for you, it is a design parameter. That yes. What is yes. the advantage to, to do that? Yes, uh, we, we, one of the main uh, features is that uh, we try to avoid the problems with, uh, with the standard PD controller. I mean, the amplification of noise, for example. Uh, we propose this uh, retarded patient version. And, and we see that we avoid these problems and we can use the, the delay as a parameter. So it's a, it's a different approach uh, that results uh, that have uh, benefits. And another related thing, if, the, if that delay is bigger, what happened with the region of the stability? With, with sorry, with what? What happened with the region of stability of the controller if the delay is bigger? Yeah. Um, oof, yes, the, these regions reduced. So uh, maybe you have seen these uh, these figures. This this is the regions repeat but with a small size to the right as we increase the delay. But um, we focus on the principal part. See, it is um, 
we have a, sm a smaller delay, the region is bigger. Uh, so we decided to, to take only small delays. Uh, and, and it's true, if we increase the delay, we have another region, so the st stability, but uh, we focus on the first one, the main region. Okay, then the that parameter H must be small to to have bigger regions, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alejandro, for this nice presentation. If there are another questions, please you feel free to contact the authors later, because we need to move to the next next uh, presentation. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next speaker is Alejandro Tevera. And he will present the, the work title Actor Critic Learning of Variable Dumpling Injection for Quadrotor Attitude Robust Control. Uh, please, uh, Alejandro. Okay. <laughs> Some technical issues. Yes. Yes.
Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you for coming. Um, if you want the uh, Tony uh, control logs is an important problem in control theory. For that reason, we are uh, proposing uh, active critical learning for variable um, data injection in order to uh, control the robots on an attitude in a quadrotor. My name is Alejandro Rivera Ruiz, and I'm going to present this uh, paper. The outline of this um, paper is divided in five sections. In the first section, we are uh, explore the uh, main fundamentals theory that we need to know in order to understand the problem statement. And then in the third section, we are talking about the control uh, mm -hmm. scheme that we are proposing, the title active critical learning of time and injection. And after that, the numerical results and conclusion are presented. The introduction, as we note, um, the difficult to tone these feedback gains is important because the, the experience of the engineer are presented in the law. Uh, for that reason, we need to consider the, uh, the gains in order to ensure the stability of the closed lot. And in particular, in air, uh, the, the air robots, we need to consider the energy consumption. For that reason, uh, if we apply a fixed gain, we need to, um, we could be uh, consider a high energy consumption. And if we, with, with this consideration, critical effects are presented and the risk of the mission as uh, compromised. For that reason, we question that if we design a viable injection, or in particular a viable uh, damping injection for the uh, quadrotor, we can uh, consider only the energy that is necessary to track uh, preference, for example. In particular, we explore considering an actor critic scheme in order to tune this uh, feedback game. And applying in attitude control in quadrotors. And finally, we apply this scheme, guarantee and uh, robust disturbances. And we start with the attitude dynamics for the quadrotor, consider the Euler, uh, Euler angles and the inertial, um, the inertial and body frames that is present in the figure one. And the uh, model dynamics is uh, explained in the first uh, equation, where the uh, martyr, the inertia matrix presented in the, with this letter and the other parameters. And, uh, in particular, we can uh, rewrite this expression in order to obtain the equation number two, which is the open loop uh, equation. And the F variable is the extended error. And if we propose the uh, omega R, as the velocity reference, we can obtain this expression in order to define a tracking uh, trajectory inside it. If we apply the control defined in the A equation, we can propose that the K letter is the constant damping injection. And if we replace this equation or control in the open loop equation, we obtain the nine equation, which is the closed loop attitude. Uh, Representation. In particular, if we propose a large uh, enough k value, we ensure a stability in closed loop. Well, in many cases, this uh, value is uh, is over of necessary value, and for that reason, we can uh, propose um, another uh, value uh, to. Design this uh, proposition, we can consider the reinformers learning and uh, explore in order to consider this uh, figure, the figure number two, where the two elements of the reinformer learning is presented. The agent and the uh, environment are interacting in order to the, the agent learns and policy and the environment offers as maximum, maximum uh, reward as possible. In particular, we need to design our uh, reward policy in order to codify the uh, learning goal as we want to learn the agent. Uh, there are many uh, schemes that 
use other formulary, and one of them is the so-called after the scheme. And in the classically, the the first uh, neural network is the critic, and this uh, the objective of the critic is to um, approximate a value function where their work policy is in code. And the critic uh, offers a um, performance signal to the actor neural network, and this uh, neural network applies an action which is the, the control. In many uh, schemes, the, the actor uh, use the, uh, the, the, the goal is to approximate the inverse dynamics. In our case, we need to consider the following problem statement, um, which is designed in the present with this question. We need to design a motor learning in order to evaluate the performance of the task and offer a dumping injection with the, the feedback gain uh, defined in the k value. Consider an integral uh, gain, uh, gamma, gamma, gamma value in order to ensure the sliding mode condition. And our proposal is defined in the figure number four. And if we check, we use the actor critic in order to design a reward policy, which is uh, this uh, offered by a, a user expert. And the reward with the letter A is sent to the uh, actor critic scheme. And the actor critic scheme returns a K value, which is we expect that is the uh, correct uh, dumping injection applier to the system. And in, for that reason, we can propose the, the, the result, which is the equation number 10. When the uh, quadratic product represents the conditions that the dumping injection um, feedback gain is necessary to, to obtain. And if we replace this expression to the open loop um, equation, we obtain the 11 equation what is uh, represented with this expression. Um, to design the motor learning, we need to offer a um, value function. In particular, we propose using the Doja the value function defined in the 12th equation, where the reward is defined with the R uh, value and the gamma is the uh, discount reward uh, constant. In particular, if we rewrite the 12th equation to as a virtual constraint, we obtain the equation number 15. And if we derive them uh, over the time, we obtain the 14th equation, which represent the temporal difference error. And it's necessary to uh, reduce in order to approximate a uh, value function. Uh, to design the critic neural, neural network, for that reason, we can propose a Madeline neural network uh, as the 15th equation. And if we replace this expression to the temporal difference error, we obtain the 16th equation, um, which is an uh, uncontrolled uh, uh, order ordinary differential equation. For that reason, we propose a virtual control as uh, constraint models are uh, used. And if we design this uh, virtual controller defined with the UC uh, value, we can obtain this uh, expression, which is uh, the adaptation law of the critic neural network and the virtual controller. In particular, we propose a PID controller uh, in order to ensure that the temporal difference converge as we present uh, in, the, in the stability proof. To design the reward policy, we can propose this expression in order to um, penalize the agent where the sliding uh, variable is out of the epsilon uh, on a threshold. And if we are into the uh, permissibility um, value, we can, we no, don't penalize the, the agent. To design the actor critic, the actor uh, stage, we can propose this expression in the 22 uh, equation, where it's uh, again a Madeline neural network. And if we propose this uh, adaptation law, we obtain this one. And where the gamma lambda uh, value is a uh, 
learning rate of the of the actor neural network and C bar is a so-called learning monitor. This, the learning monitor is the most important part of our scheme because with this uh, variable we can uh, encode the experience of the of the engineering where the control log is tuned. For that reason, we propose this one where if you check the enforce the reinforcement signal is provided by the critic as we can uh, we can see in this expression and consider the sliding variable as we we need no? right. Uh, the stability proof and the theory that we we obtain is defined with this uh, uh, statement, and we consider the nonlinear amplitude of the of the coordinator, and we apply in the learning control defined in the expression number ten, and applying the adaptation laws of the critic and the actor neural network, we obtain uh, the all signals of the closed loop are uh, stable. The, the, the stability proof is presented in this slide. You can see the uh, Lepano candidate function defined with the state of the of the character, the weights of the actor, the temporal difference error, the critic of the, the weights of the critic, and finally the um, another variable which is encoded by PID controller of, of the of the our scheme. If we apply the uh, classical method to the level of stability, we obtain that the expression 25. And if we assume that the monitor learning is designed by a user, uh, by an expert user, we obtain the 26 expression, where we conclude that the all equation, the all signals of the closed loop are bounded. And the second part is when you can see the 13 reference where the tracking errors ensures to convert exponentially locally. The simulation, we use these um, uh, real uh, parameters and we propose these uh, parameters to simulation. And the conditions, the initial conditions for the Euler angles of the quadruple are zero and the neural networks in product and uh, connected to the errors of the task. Um, the weights we propose that are uh, starts in zero, and the task that we uh, follow is presented in the expression 27. Three simulate cases are presented. In the first section, only uh, use, only you need to, we need to follow the desired trajectory. In the case number one, number two, the disturbance are applied to the quadruple. And finally, the disturbance uh, maintained and the regulation task is uh, presented. The result, which you can see in the third, in the A subfigure, that the damping injection is modified according to the necessary uh, slightly more condition required. And the use key, that it's a slightly more uh, uh, viable, ensure to maintain. In, in, uh, in the epsilon of the reward policy report. And the uh, monitor learning only activates when it is necessary to relearn the necessary damping injection. And the uh, control to apply, you can see that it's smooth. Uh, even if we, the learning is presented, we have some uh, no smooth signals for this only to the learning the process. According to the learning variables, you can see the uh, value function that, that increase only when the, the scheme is learned, and the the Euler um, angles is you can see the the follow trajectory. The reward policy you can see this it's only penalized when you when the the quadruptor is out of the reference, and the temporal difference converge as we expect. We uh, we did a comparison uh, uh, around the energy, considering a um, variable damping and a constant. And in particular, we obtained that we when we apply a variable damping, the energy cost uh, reduce. Um, and 
it's, it's because in the first part, the K start with zero. And for that reason, the the term, the overshoot of the of the initial uh, time is reduced. And for that reason, the total energy applied to the quadrotor is 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 smaller using a variable damping than using a cost, constant damping. The conclusion is that if we use a variable damping injection, considering an actor critic scheme, if we can uh, obtain a K value if the monitor learning is encoded by using using the user experience. Uh, the second conclusion is the damping as needed is uh, completed or achieved if we uh, consider the manifold of the ESQ, which depend of the transformer signal. The third result that we obtained is that the all the scheme depends of the level of stability and analysis. And finally, our uh, proposal method is a um, critical issue that we can consider the limitation of the battery power, which is an or the power estimation of the damping injection. And that's all for me. So thank you for having me. Thank you for the presentation, Alexandro. Uh, is there any question from the audience? No? I have one question, maybe not, not a question, but um, how can you, I don't know if you can give us a, um, a deeper insight in plain words, how uh, controlling the damping uh, ensures that the energy will be saved, will be reduced. The energy saved is a byproduct result. Uh, it's not the main goal of yeah, our. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I, uh -huh. I saw that, but. Um, I would I would like to understand uh, in plain words in another words how okay. it is possible to do that uh, controlling the damping. Oh, okay. It's possible because, if, for example, when we are driving a car, for example, we uh, module the the damping applier for the the work. And for that reason, when we consider the controller. We expect that if we modify the damping uh, feedback gain, we reduce the energy consumption because the energy is related to the level of uh, stability analysis. And for that reason, we assume that it's possible to reduce if we control the, the feedback gain. Okay, okay, see. Is another question? Okay. Then thank you, Alexander, for the presentation. And we will we will move to the next presentation, to the next talk. And yes. Good afternoon. Maria Aracelia. Aracelia. Sí. Do you speaker. listen me? Yeah. Okay. I uh, can I share my presentation. Thank you. Yes, do you see? Yeah, we are seeing Okay, it. thank you very much. Um, okay, can I begin? Yes, for sure. Yes, okay, thank you. Thank you for your presentation. My name is Maria Araceli Alcorta Garcia. Uh, mis coautores son uh, Jose Armando Sáenz Esqueda de la Facultad de Ingeniería de Ciencias y Arquitectura de la Universidad Juárez del Estado de Durango, Gerardo Maximiliano Méndez del Instituto Tecnológico de Nuevo León, Efraín Alcorta García de la Facultad de Ingeniería Mecánica y Eléctrica de la Universidad Autónoma de Nuevo León, Gira Masael Partida es estudiante de la FIME también de la Universidad Autónoma de Nuevo León y Ángel Salvador es mi compañero maestro de aquí de la Facultad de Ciencias Físico-Matemáticas. En esta ocasión, um, la presentación, la title is Optimal Risk Sensitive Controller Design Applied to a Stochastic Dynamics for a Simple Pendulum Robot. 
Um, the contents of this presentation is uh, the following. First, a little introduction, then a problem statement for risk sensitive optimal control and risk sensitive filtering, then application, results, conclusions, and reference. As uh, introduction um, antecedents, I have four important um, notes. One, respect to the obtention of the risk sensitive stochastic control. We, um, that um, was getting by Fleming, starting with a um, partial differential equation of Hamilton, Jacobi, Bellman. Other aspect is the filtering equations for non-linear systems, stochastics. Uh, some of papers, uh, one of the papers uh, can be mentioned is like uh, SST Yao in 1994. And with respect to the um, no conventional um, mean square criterion, uh, I can present to Fleming and McCannini in 1992. Uh, the authors um, present a exponential quadratic Cox criterion for stochastic systems. And uh, uh, respect to the model user in this paper, pues, uh, we took uh, Kelly and Santibáñez from 2003 who present the simple pendulum with a mother's model. The goal of this paper is to uh, reach the tuning of the gain of the optimal risk sensitive control with gravity compensation applied to the simple pendulum model changing the form of matrix B is that the coefficient of the control into the state equation and connect the risk sensitive optimal control equations with the risk sensitive filtering equations obtaining the risk sensitive controller. As a problem statement for the risk sensitive control, we have the equation of the state as uh, number one. Um, but if the derived term F is changing for uh, polynomial, polynomial form, we get equation two. This is the uh, form using for these non-linearity systems, yes? And you can see the participation of the noise as of, of noise as white noise with diffusion parameters epsilon and gamma. For this optimal control, risk sensitive, we have the exponential quadratic Cox criterion function to minimize as equation three, where participates um, function L and G. L contains the quadratic uh, error and quadratic control input. And G is the error in final time. Matrix uh, Q and H are symmetric, positive, semi-definite wave matrix. And R is a symmetric, positive, definite wave matrix. Then the RS optimal control problem with gravity compensation consists in the design of a control that makes the state rich and maintain its desired values, contracting the force gravity and minimizing the exponential quadratic cost function criterion. On the other hand, the risk sensitive filtering equations, problem statement, um, have the equation, dynamical equation two, and we add the accumulated observation equations given by four. You can see is a differential equation and these accumulated observations contain um, noise, stochastic term with uh, diffusion parameters epsilon and gamma. 
The recency filtering problem consists in designing an estimate of the state's vector. This estimate vector is good if it converge to the state values in the assigned time. Okay, and then we have the application. Uh, in this figure, you can see the um, pendulum, simple pendulum with motor, which we are um, um, building now. And uh, the model present in reference one is the equation five. In this model, we add that stochastic term, term yes, given for DW with a diffusion parameters. This uh, equation five um, was um, we're doing a change of variables, getting equation six. And then again, we uh, linearize in equation six around the equilibrium point x1 of zero equal to zero, and we get the next dynamical system. And this system, x1 is the um, displacement angular, and x2 is the velocity, angular velocity. The control input is taken as the torque of the motor of the pendulum and the participation of the white noise. Okay, uh, starting for reference two, the optimal rig sensitive control law takes the form of equation eight, where B is a matrix uh, coefficient of the control input X minus C is the error, and P is the component of the gain matrix for the control. The decided values for the state are uh, the vector C and are given by um, these values, C1 and C2. Um, in this equation, risk sensitive, um, we add a gravity compensation because we want that the pendulum maintain their position and not come back to the initial position. Yes, and then we add a gravity compensation as a mass times gravity times sin of theta. In this case, equation eight is transformed in equation nine. You see, uh, is the control with gravity compensation and replace to equation eight in the state equation. The P of T, the gain of the control risk sensitive is given by this Riccardi equation. It's the solution of this Riccardi equation and the elements of this matrix are given by equations 12. The form of the control with compen gravity compensation is given by 11. Yes, and P21 and P22 are given by, um, are the solution of the Riccati equations given in 12. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the R is control with gravity compensation, 11, uh, the gain equations, 12, and the exponential quadratic cost function criterion 3 are simulated in MATLAB, verifying the errors, values, and the values of the exponential quadratic cost criterion function three in final time, which was uh, 30 seconds. Uh, for each value of diffusion parameter epsilon, as can be seen in table one. Before of C table one, we uh, have um, other situation with the weight matrix uh, which participates in function. Uh, exponential quadratic cost function criterion. Matrix Q and H are given for equation 30. And uh, you can see that in this participates mass of the pendulum and L, where L is the distance to the center of mass to the cylinder. And R, R uh, is the input matrix, is uh, an identity matrix two times two. In other hand, 
we need to adjust the values of the diffusion parameter because you, uh, we don't uh, want to revise reba, uh, reba, the maximum torque of the motor of the pendulum. In this uh, uh, page, you can see the procedure for get the bonded of epsilon. The bonded of epsilon depends on gamma, the mass, and L, and DW as a noise, white noise. The parameters values of that participate are gamma, uh, initial conditions for X, and conditions for the gains of the control resensitive are given here. And value of gamma uh, greater than or equal to square, square root of two is getting uh, taken in account that the solution of the gain matrix of the control have solution in real, in real numbers. Okay, uh, the risk sensitive filtering equations are given by the equation for the estimate. Um, given in equation 50, you can see the participation of the control with gravity compensation in the equation for M2 corresponding to the state X2. In this case, the gains are given for matrix Q with components uh, Q sub J, so sub J Y, where are the solution of the Riccati equation 60 and uh, are given by this. Um, the equilibrium points and conditions for the gain um, and estimates are given here. Yes, for the estimates for Q. And uh, we have the results. In table one, you can see the values given to epsilon according with the bounded of epsilon. Values for error one is respect to X1 and the decided value for X1 and error two. Uh, the um, exponential quadratic cost criteria new and one last. The one last was obtained taking uh, elements of matrix B coefficient of the control input as um, value with values zero and one. The new form of matrix B taken now uh, has a value according to the mass of the pendulum and L, the longitude of the bar. You can see the values of uh, exponential quadratic cost criterion are less than uh, J last, and the errors are small. Uh, for the risk sensitive filtering results, we have ta table two. And uh, in similar form, we have values, the same values of epsilon and error one and error two, uh, where the errors are the difference between the state and the estimate corresponding. Uh, the errors are small. Uh, and uh, in the graphics, you can see the behavior of control signal for each value of epsilon. And uh, doing a scope, um, you can see that is a variation, but uh, the range or variation is small. In the same form for the error one, uh, in, in the scope, you can see the variation around zero, but uh, um, the range of variation is small. And similar form for error two. And uh, uh, respect to the estimates for the filtering, you can see gra graphic of estimate M2 in green and the resensitive control and the error two, all converge to zero. And uh, as conclusions, we have the resensitive optimal control with gravity compensation and resensitive filtering equations has been applied to a model of a simple pendulum. Uh, tuning has been made only in the real state. 
the tuning in the estimate is as a future work. And the efficiency of the risk sensitive control was proved in respect to the small ball values in the errors and small baller values in the exponential quadratic cost criterion J with respect to the obtained previously in the reference quatro, four. Pardon. And then these are the bibliography, the reference taken in this presentation. And thank you for your attention. Thank you for your presentation, Maria Alcorta. Is there any question? Maria? No. Okay, I have uh, two small questions. Yes. Um, the, the first one, uh, have you compared your your con proposal controller with uh, another approaches? Okay. Um, in this in this work, we in, don't compare the control with other uh, controls. Yes, uh, <laughs> that, that problem was the time. <laughs> oh. um, yes, but regularly um, in other papers, we um, pro um, compare the control uh, risk sensitive with PID or uh, other uh, types of control polynomials on, or, or other controls. Yes, but in this work, uh, the time wasn't. Uh, <laughs> we need more time. <laughs> okay. And the other one is uh, maybe I missed something, but uh, you are introducing some noise to the to the system. But uh, yes. you are, uh, are you changing the parameters of the of this of the system? I guess not, but. Uh, but I'm not sure. Um, excuse me, would you ask uh, according the parameters of the fusion term? No, the parameters no. of the system, like the length of the arm, the, the mass, and these other kind of parameters. Ah, uh, respect to these parameters, we ah. uh, talk uh, values of these parameters according with a real case that we are building uh, for do a implementation, we um, took uh, real values okay. because we we want to do an implementation of this equation and do a comparison too with other control techniques and get uh, some results about this. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Much. Thank you very uh, much. Thank you. The next. Uh, Speaker is uh, Alejandro Melendez, and he will present the work title Trajectory Tracking of a Single Link Manipulator Driven from a Double Bridge Bock Converter, uh, a Cascade ADRC approach. Alejandro, are you with us? Sí. Okay. Hello. <laughs> No, no, no,
para pantalla completa. Es que se fue ahí. Ahí la abrieron desde el navegador. Lo pueden abrir desde el PD, el la prueba Reader. Sí, pero el cañón está teniendo. Se ve. No se ve bien. No. Entonces. Ponle zoom, F11, dice. Sí. Uh, welcome, well, good, good, good afternoon everybody, and um, thank you for being here. Welcome to the presentation trajectory tracking of a single lane manipulator driven by uh, driven from a double ditch block converter and cascade IDRC approach. I want to start thanking my colleagues, Mario Andrea and the Dr. Sid for their participation in this paper. I want to start with the model of the system. The system starts with a block converter, which in ent uh, entry is a switch-based voltage, and the output is a continuous voltage, uh, who enters to the motor, who moves the uh, single-leg manipulator. Let the system of the of differential equation be as follows, where the the first two equations represent the, the different equation of the uh, pendulum, of a pendulum. The next two equations represent the equation for a motor and the last two equations for a bulk converter. If we can combine the first uh, four equations in, and take it to a status state represent, representation. Uh, according to the ADRC methodology, we can take the theta, like the output of the total system. So if we take theta, uh, um, sorry, the, the, these three equations represent the, this, the stage, the combining motor and pendulum, and the last two equations represent the ball converter in this space space. If we take theta, as the output, uh, flat output of the system, and we derive this, we can get um, we can get x two, and the, into the in the second equation, if we clear x three, uh, we can we can get x four because the old parameters in the second equation are constants by the by the system. So if we derive X3, we can find X4. And if we derive X4, we can find X5. And finally, if we derive X5, we can get to the control of the total system. This is a, a block diagram of the plant and control. And it starts with the desired trajectory represented by Y star, and the this reference enters to the to the controller of theta, and the output it is desired voltage who needs to control the second controller, the K sub B. So this last controller are going to to give us the, um, the voltage necessary to input uh, the switched voltage necessary to the box. Uh, also, we have the measurement from the bulk converter, the continuous uh, voltage by B sub B, and the noisy of this measurement is represented by eta sub B. And finally, we have also C sub theta and C sub B representing the endogenous and exogenous uh, disturbances of the system. Taking the time der derivatives of the flat output system, it's easy to arrive at the following fixed order input output system. A reduced, um, 
and the reduced order is extended states observer based active disturbance rejection control for um, for for now on just a ADRC control for trajectory tracking purpose designed for the fixed order system is just this expression. Uh, because the system can split in two subsystems, we can separate the, the, the um, representation into one of the third order and the last one of second order. Notice that the U is the control input of the second uh, sub, uh, subsystem and this output is the, volt, uh, the voltage necessary to the first subsystem represented by B sub P. And finally, the output of the first subsystem is the filter. Uh, also, we have the gains of each uh, subsystem and the two independent ADRC controllers were designed for each subsystem. The design parameters kappas of each controller are computed respect, respecting the separation principles where the, the parameters are computed to be Horwitz to ensure the is the to, to ensure to be st uh, stable for the controller and observer represented by this expression each um, each for the subsystem the first for the subsystem theta the motor pendulum and the second one for the bulk converter thereby we have the these two um, two expressions, the first one, the first one to to compute the the values, the the gains of the the subsystem of model pendulum, and the second one for the gains of the second uh, subsystem, the bulk converter. Also, we have a few constraints. Uh, we implement, implement also an exponential moving average filter for now on uh, EMA filter. The EMA filter equation is given by this expression where alpha is a tuning parameter with values between zero and one. When the alpha is equal to one, the the filter, the, the output of the filter is the same input. And when alpha is equal to zero, uh, there is no output because all frequencies uh, which enter to this EMA filter are um, um, doesn't, doesn't pass through the filter. The filter cutoff frequency is given by this expression, and below we have the cutoff frequencies. The first one is used for the for, for the bulk converter, and the second one is used for the 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 motor pendulum. It's easy to see that for alphas lower, we have also lower frequencies. Uh, cutoff frequencies. This is the plat uh, experiment, experimental platform and uh, is composed by two uh, links. The first one is the dis uh, design to, to follow the desired trajectory, and the second one is only for uh, disturbance, more, di uh, more disturbance for the first link. We also use a uh, DSP from Texas Instrument to reach, to reach the, the continuous voltage provided by this PCB uh, of a bulk converter, and also read the angular position 
provided by an encoder who is connected to the motor shaft. This is the block diagram uh, again, but in this case we have the the added of the low pass filter by the EMA filter in uh, just before the two controllers. And below we have the parameters of the, the both controllers. This is the system parameters used for the experiment. And this is the results. In the first graph, we have the undisturbed experimental result and the second, the perturbed experimental result. We can see in both cases, uh, we have uh, external uh, a good angular position trajectory tracking because the error is also below um, 0 0.15. 0.15. And uh, we also can see uh, um, a few peaks in the bulk voltage trajectory tracking uh, because we are using high gains in the controller for the bulk converter. So we, we need to use the EMA filter and these peaks are lower now. Um, we can also see that the ISP uh, graph can uh, reach uh, a, a constant value because there is no error in the in the stationary uh, states. No, uh, while in the perturbed experimental, we we can see uh, always is growing up because uh, um, we have a uh, disturb in the system that also is affecting to the trajectory tracking. So we have uh, a new um, a little oscillator uh, always close to the desired trajectory. Uh, the control input of the bulk converter in both cases are always between minus one to one. This is good. And for translate, the U control, that is uh, uh, the control equivalent, we use uh, Delta Sigma mod mod modulator to have the switch, the switch voltage to the bulk converter. Let me show, show you um, a video from the experiment. And for conclusions, the proposed control scheme satisfactorily achieves the control task despite the noise instrument signals and the external disturbance affecting the system. Although the ADRC controller is robust and effectively deals with endogenous and exogenous disturbances, it's also sensitive to measurements noises due to the large observer bandwidth. 
Despite the support given by the EMA filter to the ADRC controller's performance, a careful selection process must be done for the parameter alpha to avoid an overfitting process of the signal. Thank you for the attention. Thank you for the presentation, Alexander. Uh, is there any question? No? Uh, Alejandro, uh, when you chose your video, I saw that you are using a two-link uh, manipulator. Yes. Yeah, but uh, you are saying that you, ap you apply only to one <laughs> link. Okay, maybe better. If I try to replicate, I am interested in, in, in replicate this, uh, this experiment. Uh, do you recommend uh, this uh, C2000, I, I thought, Texas Instrument uh, CPU, DSP? Or yes, I, correct. could I use uh, a smaller one? I don't know. No, I use a C200 series, DCP. Yeah, but DCP. you need this, uh, this, uh, this uh, a CPU with this capacity, or I can use a, a slower one, a small one. Uh, in the first experiment, I use the um, an STM, STM, uh, STM board, but mm -hmm. the, the communication uh, was broke, uh -huh. slow. <laughs> so I need to change to this one for okay. capacity. Uh, for capacity, uh, capacity, uh, I I'm sure. Um, uh, a smaller DSP is good. Okay. Okay, thank you. Is there another question, please? No? Then thank you, Alexander, for the presentation. And thank you. Uh, we are, now we are closing this uh, session. Thank you for attending it. it and please uh, continue with us in the next sex sections, sessions. Thank you. Thank you.